Jack Seward. I'm a managing editor at Coindesk. Uh, if you're here for the chessboard session, we had a late cancellation, so Ella from Binance was unable to join us. So less chessboard, more fireside chat. Uh, Emily Choi and I are going to fire up the hearth and talk about uh, what's going on at Coinbase. So please join me in welcoming Emily Choi of Coinbase. So uh, first question, Emily, let's get everybody on the same page here. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that is related to your title. So I just wanted to get a sense, uh, kind of an everyday feel for what it is you do. Um, I get to do a lot of fun things at Coinbase. Um, so what I've done for the, for the most of my career has been um, tech M&A and strategy. And so my principal role at, at Coinbase is Corp Dev, which is M&A. I launched the Ventures uh, program last year. So I run ventures, um, business development, business operations and strategy, um, data, international, and uh, institutional coverage. Got it. So you were at uh, LinkedIn previously mm -hmm. for a number of years. Um, how does your work like within Coinbase and within the crypto sector differ from your past experience uh, in tech M&A? Um, it honestly feels totally different. Uh, I've been in tech M&A my entire career, like I said, and I think that crypto M&A and investments is a whole different ballgame. Um, it tends to be, be people who don't always have the most traditional backgrounds in Silicon Valley tech, for example, whereas there was a pattern that I knew um, at my other companies. Um, and it's more distributed, um, the types of technology we're looking for are different, and the types of entrepreneurs that we are seeking out are different. In many cases, one of the things I actually really like about the entrepreneurs in crypto is um, they care a lot more about what they're working on and the um, scope they have as opposed to superficial aspects of a deal. Because mm -hmm. frankly, in many cases, they've already made their money in crypto. Mm -hmm. Is there like an emerging type? You mentioned sort of the type, the pattern that you had seen in your past work. Is there an emerging type here in 2019 that you're sort of, you know, I should say you've been at Coinbase for a year now. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a, a, a trend that you're identifying in terms of what uh, smacks you as a successful uh, investment? Um, no, and I think that's actually what's cool about this space. It, it, it's. I mean, there's some level of pattern recognition because when you talk to the best technologists, you can hear their energy and excitement and enthusiasm um, about trying and, and figuring things out. Um, but in general, no, like I think, I think that things are different and I don't think that there's a profile of person that is particularly good in this space and I think that's actually what's really cool about crypto. What are the stats right now? So like how many acquisitions have you, you know, presided over? How many investments are you dealing with right now? Like well, give, me, give me some of those quick numbers for, for the audience. We've done just over 15 aqua hires and acquisitions um, and we've done just over 50 venture investments over the past year. Cool. One I wanted to focus on in particular is the Neutrino acquisition, which obviously caused quite a bit of backlash uh, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. uh, the team at Neutrino was brought on into Coinbase. Uh, you know, some days later, after much internet backlash uh, relating to their past work with the hacking team, which had worked for oppressive regimes worldwide, uh, CEO Brian Armstrong said it was in conflict with the mission of Coinbase uh, and that some of those staffers would be transitioned out. Um, from where you sit, uh, what are the main like lessons learned from that episode? Uh, what did you take from that experience, uh, and what do you hope to do better going forward? Yeah, I, it, it was ver a very difficult point in our in our company history. I think when when you're growing so fast, just to take a step back, we're growing very very fast. We're doing things very quickly, and sometimes you miss things. Uh, in this case, we missed the work history of some of the, the founders, the, the previous work history of some of the founders who, who worked at, at this company. And it was a miss, it was a huge miss. Um, I think one of the things that I'm really excited about though was that we actually like used it at this, as this collective moment. We, we, we have a value called continuous learning where we like took a step back and we were like, okay, we wanna reassert our values and our mission to create an open financial system for the world and this doesn't fit with that and so um, we made that very difficult decision, and I think we're all the better for it. Mm -hmm. So, like, very good lessons from this, and um, I'm really proud of the company in those moments. Those are defining moments for a company. Yeah, can you speak to some of the challenges of, of just due diligence in the crypto space? I mean, again, a lot of those, uh, you know, traditional signposts and structures don't necessarily exist. So when you're doing due diligence in the space for, you know, an acquisition or an investment, kind of walk me through your process and how that differs from past work. Yeah. In traditional tech, 
there was always like a, a playbook in my head which involved looking at the founder's backgrounds. I typically knew, that the knew the companies they worked at and I typically had multiple connections with them that I could just reach out to and immediately I would, I would get a reference check. Um, in, in the case of crypto, again, we're dealing with distributed teams, they're global, um, their, their work history is just different. It, it may be companies you've never heard of, um, and that's okay, but it makes it harder. And so I think that what we've done post that is just uh, implement a more rigorous process there to make sure that we can pressure test it. Mm. But it, it's definitely more difficult than traditional tech. And I think that you know, in 10 years time when we talk about this, we're gonna, we're gonna have the same types of levels of diligence in place that we do for, for standard tech M&A, but right now it's just, it's, it's building. Yeah, that relationship aspect is really interesting, actually. Yeah. Um, is there a particular sort of subset of technologies or startups, uh, you know, that here in 2019, as crypto spring, uh, you know, gains momentum that you're particularly interested in? Um, so the way that we look at ventures is we, first and foremost, we just, we want to get really excited about the team. We, got, we want to get really excited about the technology. Um, we are particularly excited about companies that are working towards an open financial system because that, that fits so nicely with our mission. And so right now, when you look at companies in our portfolio like Cello or Dharma or Compound that are, that are attempting to, to, to do that and build that, that's really exciting. We love to look for companies that are um, potentially just doing strategic adjacencies that are interesting, and that might be things like experimenting with security tokens or something that you know, we don't have a great handle on yet, but we want to just better understand. Um, we actually invest a lot in companies that potentially may be competitive with Coinbase. This is another dif differentiating factor with, with traditional tech. You typically see the tech incumbents like Facebook and Google um, and others, like it's very much, you know, like, uh, a zero-sum game. I think the cool thing about crypto is we don't think we have some type of monopoly on innovation, and so we're totally comfortable investing in, for example, competitive wallet companies with, with Coinbase Wallet and others, um, because like maybe they're gonna figure out something more innovative than we are, and maybe they won't, but maybe we can work together in the future. So th those are some of the areas that we, we'd like to look for. You know, if I'm like an entrepreneur in the room or a technologist, what's like the most annoying way for me to bug you about uh, <laughs> learning more about Coinbase? And what are some tips and tricks for making, uh, you know, those interactions uh, less awkward than they, than they typically are? Yeah. Um, we have so much volume of inquiries that we typically only take warm intros from people that we know. And so the best way that you can get an introduction to Coinbase Ventures or Coinbase Corp Dev is you know, you know, a similar investor or you know one of the Coinbase alumni or somebody at Coinbase who can, who can help reach out because otherwise we just can't handle the volume. Um, just for context, we don't actually have a dedicated ventures team. Um, we're, tr we're trying to be really scrappy about this. So I and several others in the company um, do this as a side gig. And so the scale that we're dealing with married with the fact that we have day jobs makes it more difficult. So it's not like we're trying to be unresponsive, but we just have to use the warm intro as our filter. Yeah, that's crazy. A side gig for mm -hmm. a, a company valued last fall at like $8 billion. Mm -hmm. You guys raised a, a whopping $300 million plus Series E. Yep. Um, that sounds like a lot of money to play with, but I guess it's not necessarily the, the focus right now. Is that right? Um, I think that we'll be levering, leveraging that. I mean, I think, first of all, it's nice to have the money for a rainy day when we were seeing some of the doldrums in, in, in crypto prices. It's nice to have a cushion and we wanna have enough runway for, for several years. Um, but we also plan to use that. I mean, I think we plan to use both our stock and cash to do both investments and M&A and also invest in CapEx and, and building offices around the world and making sure that we're scaling. Mm -hmm. So um, we, de we definitely have good uses for the cash as well. Got it, and you mentioned like international is certainly mm -hmm. part of your portfolio. Uh, when you're looking at international growth, international expansion, you know, what are some of the indicators that you're looking for when you're, when you're figuring out uh, where and how to expand? Yeah, um, the first thing we look for is, is fiat to crypto activity, how strong that is. Um, and so obviously the US is number one there and, and the EU is quite strong. Um, the next obvious markets are gonna be places like Japan where, where we're setting up shop um, and where we think there's a, a massive opportunity for Coinbase. Um, but that's, we're going to play to our strengths with the fiat to crypto bridge and being the, you know, the trusted, safe center of the crypto economy as we enter these new markets. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, that's interesting, right? You're like, you're courting a, a mass market. You're courting a market of people who are oftentimes introduced to the space by way of your products and services. Um, talk to me about, um, you know, holding that center. Talk to me about serving that, that broad middle uh, as opposed to sort of, sort of um, you know, serving more fringe use cases. So um, I think, you know, we, we think of Coinbase as serving everyone, and then we think of Coinbase Pro as for the active trader or, or the most more advanced user. So I think we, we serve that whole group of, of the continuum. Um, but certainly, even for you know, people who are just coming into the system, they're going to want to experiment with new areas that we can offer. I mean, like I think one of the cool things about crypto is um, you know, if, if we offer something like staking to consumers, that's a, that's a really cool way for them um, to participate in, in creating value. Um, or the fact that we are going to enable asset issuers to, to kind of work directly and talk directly to users, those are things that I think are really unique. And so they may seem advanced, but I think that we're trying to create um, a platform where it's, it's very accessible to people and they can kind of quickly learn about the, the nuances of crypto and how, how to use it and engage. What do you see as your biggest competitors in the space at this point in time? Like as you are surveying the landscape, I know you mentioned you know, not being fearful to support potentially competing products on the venture side. Um, you know, where does competition lie for Coinbase uh, here, here and now? Mm -hmm. So if you think about our business and what we're building, essentially we've got the brokerage, we've got an exchange, and we've got the custodian. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you look out to the ecosystem, there's, there's monoline competitors with each of those different, different businesses. Um, so for example, um, on the active trader side, I think it's very clear Binance has a, a very, very strong position there. I think that we couldn't be more differentiated as different companies and we have the utmost respect for them, but we're, we're all playing different games and we think that there's more than enough market for all of us to participate in. Um, so we actually, like, we welcome the competition in these different markets because we think it drives things forward and, mm -hmm. and it just helps create awareness for the market. Um, and then on the, the custodian side, um, obviously, you know, companies such as um, BitGo and others are, are participating in that space and, and Zappo. Um, and then you're, you're hearing more and more stories about some of the traditionals getting into that market as well. Mm -hmm. So Emily, you, got, you have like a great perch on this you know, this environment. What are some of the exciting things that you're seeing? What are the technologies that like you think are cool? What are some of the projects that you think people should pay attention to? Like, what's an exciting thing that's come across your desk in the last three to six months? Mm. Um, I do think, you know, what we're seeing in decentralized finance is, is where a lot of the activity is happening. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that was very intuitive, you know, necessarily a year ago. Mm -hmm. So that to me is one of the most exciting sectors that we're seeing. And then, I love, you know, I love to see really um, just ambitious projects. Like when I see something like Celo, which is essentially kind of like a, a Venmo for the entire developing world, that's helping move the open financial system forward. Um, you know, companies such as Starkware, they're helping, helping create scale. I mean, I, I, there's no favorite child here. Like I, I think that there's so much innovation happening. In fact, I think one of the things that's missing from all of the, the press stories about prices or anything like that is about the innovation that we're seeing um, in the space. I just We've never seen better technologists and better technology being built, and I think that we're, we're going to look back and be like, whoa, like this was, this was a foundational year for development in, mm -hmm. in the crypto space. You know, part and parcel with that, is there anything that you think we're missing as a space? Do you, is there anything that you wish we were seeing more of? Um, I just think there's so much noise, mm -hmm. and um, it, it's hard to kind of filter it out, and so... Um, you, you just, you hear about a lot of different projects, you hear about a lot of different people, and just the volumes are, are again, overwhelming. And so, um, I, th I, I, I don't know kind of how to get to that level of, you know, credibility for different projects or things like that, but um, I think we're, we're building things one step at a time, and I think we're in early days, and, and we'll, we'll continue to see that stuff filter out. Got it. And last question, you know, you, you got your first year in the books, which in crypto time, pretty long. Feels like 10 years. Yeah. Feels like 10. All right. <laughs> so for the next 10 years, aka the next 12 months, Yep. Uh, what are your goals? You know, what are your professional goals uh, as you, you know, you, you come out of a year that had some successes, some low points. For the next 12 months, what are you trying to do personally at Coinbase? Mm -hmm. I'm always trying to bolster our overarching strategy and goals, which include, you know, we want to make sure we nail crypto trading and, and nail um, crypto custody. 
and we also want to make sure that we're laying the foundation to become the center of, um, the, again, the trusted center of the crypto economy, which we believe is basically um, an aggregation of different activities that people are doing are, are doing to participate in the crypto economy. That includes things like buy and sell. It includes things like lend and borrow. Um, eventually, it'll, it'll include things like you know uh, predict, predictions and things like that. So. We want to just keep building a foundation that helps people to participate in that. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, Emily. I thank appreciate you. talking thanks to you. Thanks for having me. Uh, join me in thanking, uh, thanking Emily Choi, and uh, thanks so much for being part of Consensus 2019.